Oh, hi, sugar muffins. It's me, Susie Caduzzi, and we're doing a little Sue TV Christmas promo for your inspiration because we want you guys to feel a okay. All right, so I have my guest here today is Vince Dasko. You see, he has Sue TV hat on. He is, um, he's actually a, a publicist for P actors with uh, disabilities. So, one of the main things I'm going to do on my Sue TV, um, site is going to be able to bring a lot like so much awareness that I can to uh, people with disabilities no matter what they are because I feel like that's part of the our society that has it's, it's getting more visible but I don't know there's something about somebody who's able-bodied doing it I think that is very powerful and uh why not why not use my voice and my 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 career for something that helps bring visibility that people that should just have it are ordinarily so Vince welcome Vince hi Stella, how are you? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Vince. So I wrote down some questions that I want to ask you. I just want to do this as like an introduction because you're going to be our person that we go to when we're talking about the disability things. The first thing I want to say off the top is that um, where we are in the country is there's a lot of judgment and fear going on. And I feel like uh, what we need, I keep calling it Sue Process because everybody's saying we're not having any due process. So what I'm going to do is bring Sue Process to everybody. I'm going to bring the hard numbers and really give people the facts of what's going on. And sometimes we'll suss them out through these conversations. But um, uh, the thing that happens, what I realize is that people are not aware of people. With dis they don't, there's not enough knowledge out there. So people that are able-bodied, they don't know. They don't know that, uh, you know, you can't reach when you're at the, at the store to sign a credit card thing, or they don't, they just don't have that information. So uh, I guess we won't judge them until we give them the information. And then if they're still awful, then we'll judge them. <laughs> How's that sound? Uh, if we start to we'll look back at ADA back uh, in, in the 90s, I think maybe we could start doing that a little bit more even. If we go back to the ADA in the 90s, we can start doing what a little more? Yeah, it's still, still, things are still not being done. No, so the <laughs> American the Disabilities minimum. Act. You're talking about the American Disabilities Act in the yes. 90s, right? So yeah, there's things like sidewalks, like people don't understand the 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 importance of sidewalks, right? And the ramps, and if the ramps have bumps on them, if you're in an electric chair and you can't get down there, there's like little tiny things that we're gonna go go into throughout the time with Sue TV. But I just want to give people a little heads up, just so they start thinking in their brains about uh, being more aware. And the other thing, the, the other thing I want to say is when you see somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with a disability, look them in the eye and say hi. I mean, everybody doesn't say hi to everybody, even if they're, you know, on two legs, right, around, right. but still look them in the eye as if you would anybody else or, or get mad at them. I, I want to say that too. get mad right. at them the same way you would get mad at somebody else, because isn't that a thing? Oh, yeah, of course. Like I said, you, one of the questions you wanted me to explore, was, you know, how, how do I in one sense? Well, equal opportunity and you have an equal opportunity to not to like somebody as a person or love somebody as a person, not just because they are disabled or or you, f you fear them or you feel awkward around them. I do believe in my 23 years on, on this earth, ha ha ha. Uh, now I just turned 74, thank you. Well, it has been changing, it has, it has been changing. And I think equal, equal opportunity, of course, and less patronism, but, but patronization, not patronization, patronization, and what we would consider ableism, and cut back on that a little bit. Some of it is understood, and some of it is in the kind of welcome. But when it gets to the point where you're going to prevent me from doing something or wanting something because you don't care to understand, that's when we have a problem. But I want to—that's what I want to do. I want to be the bridge between all of this, the the mediator, if yeah. you will, where ableists don't necessarily have the information yet. So I can understand because just from a standpoint of mine, mine comes through as a woman, like how frustrated I get if I'm treated differently because I'm a woman. Yeah, well, so yeah, exactly. I want to be able and to- have been, And may I just say real quickly, you have been an ally of ours for a great deal, a long time, and, I, and uh, a great supporter of me for a long time. Oh, since I was so, a kid, I used to be like, Wait a minute. Right. I'm like, why are they saying that the people in the wheelchair, the people with the with the mental disabilities or or something yeah. that you I mean, I even don't even like that word disabilities, but you say it's important. But I'm like, I don't is it's it empowering. Is it? It's empowering. But is it because 
it's like when you go blind, your other your other senses get stronger. So we'll get into well, that. that. Not technically, though. You, you have to train that to your to your okay. own. Yes, I was going to. I mean, people become that way because they they're trained to it, or they develop it. I mean, even for me, I mean, you can tell somebody that doesn't really want to talk to you from a mile away. Maybe yes. you too, but uh, for me, it's even a little further away. <laughs> right. But that was what I was going to get to. I was going to get to how you have to train other sides of your body. I, I was going to already, I was already thinking about that before this, about the uh, the patience and the stamina that needs to be trained in a person that, that has a disability. But since I was a kid, I used to work with uh, with people with, I guess you, they call them mental disabilities. I thought they were the most loving. They didn't have any inhibitions. So for me as a, as a teenager who grew up in a rough neighborhood, it was all flipped to me. I was like, these people are loving. I'm like, they take care of their stuff. They... They're adorable. They're funny. I'm like, they, and these other people that were ableist, if, I mean, um, that were able-bodied were very grumpy. So to me, I, since I was, a kid, I was always like, well, uh, I don't know. Like, and, and there is something to be said. That's why I wanted to do that to this interview today, because I'm sure Christmas is very hard for people. It's very easy to get grumpy because everybody's like pushing each other around. And I just wanted to give people hope that, uh, that it, you can find the light no matter where you are. And and I and I mean that in the most tragic of situations, you can find the light, and that makes people mad sometimes because they 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 don't understand, they don't they can't believe it. But we're going to show them. So, uh, what was the first question? Let's see what the first question I had for you. Oh, and the other thing was that uh, my friend in high school got paralyzed, and my brother got paralyzed, and I remember my friend in high school told me she said that they did a study, and uh, it said that people with um uh, with spinal cord injuries or people with disabilities tended to be happier than people who were able bodied. And I thought that's interesting. Why is that? And I'm like, oh, maybe because maybe because the worst thing happened to you and you lived through it, so you're not afraid as much anymore. You can answer. You can tell me this, but this is what I thought. And I thought um, you have something to you have to fight. You have to fight to take care of yourself. So it gives you like an engagement in life. And correct me if I mean I don't want to speak for you, but well, is that... you're right. But I have a I have a fantastic story, if I may. I, I yes. Yes. Go ahead. I went to college at Penn State for a little while. One of the colleges I was at, yeah, I graduated from. Oh, a good friend of mine was paralyzed. That I met was a paralyzed young man who was a mis. Well, back in the day, handicapped per handicapped person of Pennsylvania, something like that. You know, some, and he got media. He's he he got a, a, a great got got. Great job after he's out of the out of the uh, you know, college. He's a spokesperson. He told me he said, "Well, he was a mountain climber, and as he was climbing the mountain, he started to fall, and he either would fall where there was a lot of rocks, or completely off the mountain." He said, "I chose the rocks, and of course, he was paralyzed." And at that time, he also lost his girlfriend at the time. But after a while, he thought about it. He told me, he said, Vince, becoming disabled was, was he says, it's hard to believe I am the handicapped person of the year. But it is also one of the best things that ever happened to me. <laughs> he said, I am paralyzed now, but I got a career. I got a life. I'm making good money, I'm known, and I got rid of my crappy girlfriend. <laughs> That's the other thing, the sense of humor. You have to have a sense of humor. And then that preciousness that you were talking about, the patronizing, it's like people don't want to be, people that are in, you have to laugh. So so if I'm an able-bodied person patronizing you and not laughing, I mean, that's that comes across as like a judgment because I, you don't know. We could all fall off the side of a mountain. It's like you can't, this judgment of thinking that it could never happen to you or whatever. It reminds me yeah. of when I did the death benefit at um, B.B. King's in New York. I walked on stage and uh, there was a signer, you know, a hand signer, so that the deaf people could yeah. hear. The first thing yeah. I said, the first, what is it? Interpreter. Yeah. Yeah. And so the a first. Terp. A turf. A turf. Is that what they call it? A turf. Yeah. yeah. In, 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 our, in, our, in our language, yes. A turf. All right, a turp. So there was a turp, and I walked on stage. The first thing I said was, "She better be fucking funny," and they <laughs> loved it. <laughs> they loved it. Because, and then afterwards, the woman said to me, and then there were two girls talking on the front, and 
said, I can hear you. And they were roaring laughing. And then I got off stage and the woman said to me, Sue, thank you. You treated us like human beings. And I was like, right. yeah. But then I was like, oh, that's probably what happens. Either somebody's too nervous or they go too far. Because it's a fine line. Yeah. You can't go too far. You can't pretend that you know you can't. You have to just, it's a, it's a, um, it's an inclusive thing, like a heart-filled thing that I think the world needs right now is to be able to see whether you're able-bodied or not, or disabled or not. We need to open our hearts more. I think that's what's going on in this country. So that's why I wanted to do this interview today. I wanted people to see the great Vince Staskell. All right, so I'm going to ask you these questions. This is just going to be a short one today because we're going to bring you back plenty of times. But uh, in one Thank sentence, you, tell me your opinion. This is what in one sentence, tell me your opinion. What the simplest, most important thing that people with disabilities want able people to know? Well, exactly. But as I say, equal opportunity and to be treated fairly. Those are buzzwords now, but it's actually the truth. <laughs> you know, I. I cannot get up. I, it's not up to me to get up to play the steps if I cannot get there. All I'm not, and even like I say, when we get into these things, we're not even asking that much sometimes just to be able to, you know. I went up a long ramp at a, at a uh, uh, diner years ago, and it was around, it was what they call a swing back ramp. I'm getting too wrong, and I'm sorry, but I think it's funny. And I went all around my buddy. I think you're was famous now me. is what's going on. And he turned and he turned around and I, I went up the side of the, up, up the long ramp, up the side of the other side, it's a swing back ramp. And I got to the front door. There was a step there. Mm. <laughs> and of course they came all the way by I said, no, no, no. I mean, you have a 40-foot ramp out there. And they still can't get into your uh, restaurant. It's a four-inch run uh, step. It might, have, it might as well be 40 feet high. <laughs> okay, let me, so I want to translate that for people because when they hear the equal opportunity in their head, they're going to, so I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate. They hear like, how could it be equal opportunity? Because, okay, let's put, let's put a job in. Like, I want you to talk about this. So let's put a job in there. So if I have to go to work and I'm running late, I can just run and go to work. I can get myself there. If someone else who's in a wheelchair or something is running late for work, or they, there's a lot more that goes into that. So how would you, what kind of, if, if, so you're not asking for equal opportunity. You just want the step to not be at the end of the ramp. You want people to understand what your needs are because what they would always go to is financially because that's what the world runs on. So financially, yeah. so say the actors, this is a perfect example because this is what I, I have this question too. So if you have a disabled actor on your set, it takes more time. So it would take more money. So how do you feel? Like, what, what is the your community? What do they feel about that? Well, uh, well, it, that's not really true in every sense of the word. Okay. Uh, a fantastic actress that I wish I can, I, I can't remember her name right now. I'm so sorry. Don't but worry. she said, disabled actor in a wheelchair, she said, they can do a replica they can build a replica of the Titanic, but they can't put a ramp to my dressing room trailer. Okay, so we're just we're we're seriously just at the ramps. Like that's really the basic thing. Like, so this is what I want to find out. So then we can go step by step. So the main thing that we would do now when we start is the ramps. Like, let's just focus on that one thing because that will bring awareness. Because you don't want to get too big because people can't hear it, because it's not about them. They don't care. Why do they care? They're not disabled. So, so the main thing to go about is, is would be the ramps, would be the steps. Because if we talk about that enough, people will stop becoming aware of it. They don't know. And if you start saying that, that you want equality and, and people feel defensive, then they're not going to be open to hear, right? Well, well yes. But in modern day uh, uh, building codes, uh, ANSI standards, is a, there is a accessibility, basic accessibility built into codes. And what, what happens is it, it, you try to make it as, as minimum as possible, but to be, again, fair. But, and if it's coming from the government, then they have a responsibility. We used to say, well, I can't get on the bus, but I have to pay track. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. don't worry. I can't get on the bus, but I have to pay taxes for people for the bus 
in my taxes, it comes out of the, something that's inaccessible to me. Or in many days, the 50s and 60s. Back in 1950s, the first hand, uh, President Eisenhower was the handicap, again, a handicapped person of the year. And he was a World War II veteran, uh, amputee in a wheelchair. He could not get into the building that, that the award was given to him. Oh. Eisenhower walked out of the house of the whatever was it, the Capitol building site entrance, whatever, and handed it to him. And he, there's a picture of it. He stand, Eisenhower's on the third step up and he's sitting there in his wheelchair and Eisenhower's handing him the award. <laughs> All right, so... Nobody's ever heard that story before. They 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 would never even know that. But now that we're talking about it, so the ramps and the accessibility are the main thing. And because of people, I'm going to play devil's advocate again because they're going to say, "Well, I have to pay taxes for things that I don't benefit from too." That's because it's always that's that, that, that doesn't hurt you. A ramp doesn't hurt you. An accessible. I'm talking about it's the new. you're saying the the buses. You're saying that you have to pay. Taxes well, yeah, but I mean, a, a, a ramp is not. I mean, the, I don't mean to jump in, but. That's right. Again, ramp, ramp, the ramps, again, and that's common. It still really helps all, all elderly people with canes, mothers with, with groceries, or ba anyone with groceries, or a baby that would say baby carriage. They benefit from ramps. A ramp does not hurt you. If you're paying taxes for a ramp, you can, you can, also, you can also walk up to ramp. Huh, that's interesting because I wasn't even. But I cannot get on the bus. Right, and I wasn't even talking about ramps, but you circled it back in, which is good because you're talking about how they benefit from the ramps. But I'm, no, I'm talking about like people would argue that they're paying for uh, the immigrants that they don't want to be here or stuff. They'll argue, they'll argue that they're paying for something too. So I, I want to keep it very, very simple where there is no place for people to go in because that's what the tendency is nowadays. The tendency is for everybody to do the whataboutism and because everybody feels like they're being screwed over right now. So all I want to do is bring awareness. I want to bring equilibrium and awareness and keep it very, very simple. That's what Sue TV is going to be like. Let's keep things very simple, palatable, because if it's something extra that people can't fit on their plate right now, it's going to be hard for them to want to do that. So the best way to encourage people to do that is to be respectful and slowly bring it in. So the first step, so I'm glad I just asked you that one question. That's all we're going to do today because I don't want to overwhelm this thing. I just want it to be short and sweet so people get an idea. But the idea of the ramps, like that's what we're going to stop because people have no idea that the, the severity of not being able to get your wheelchair onto a tiny little, like a step, like people don't, mm -hmm. can't even comprehend that. Mm -hmm. And that's the devastation when you get yourself all the way up a big ramp. It's also not only just physically devastating, it's, it feels disrespectful. It feels hopeless, hey, right? But we had to find another place to eat. I mean. Say it again? I, we, we had to find another place to eat and, was, and we were on the highway. So it took a while to get another place. And then you have to train yeah, accessibility the back there was an issue. <laughs> Let's talk through that before we finish. I want to talk through that. So if you get to a place that's not ADA up to code and you've traveled, so you've gotten yourself up, dressed, transferred into the vehicle, out of the vehicle, all the way to the door to eat. So this is taking you many hours to get ready. And then if it's not accessible, you've looked it up, you've Googled it, it says it's accessible, then you get there and it's not accessible. Then you have to get back to the car, transfer back into the car, get yourself to another place, hope that the ramp is at the other place, and get yourself home. So there's there's a, so much more work that go, gets involved in. Well, yeah, right, exactly, exactly that. I I work I worked on a, a, a theater in back near here, I should say, near Poughkeepsie, advertising stuff was accessible. Mm -hmm. But it was a big row of ramp, big again, a nice stairway up to the front door. They were in this building on a small side street. So how do you say it's accessible? He said, Well, we had to get our bathroom on the third floor reinstalled it because of ANSI, they had to make it accessible. So the bathroom on the third floor was accessible. accessible. But the ramp. But every step up until then wasn't. And so anyway, is, I, can, I, got, huh? I got a million of them. But this <laughs> is reflective of the country. This is where we all have something in common. This is reflective of the country. They say that they're accessible. It's like everything's backwards. People aren't, 
it's crazy. That's why I want to keep everything simple. It's like, oh, you you fix people don't even think like, oh, the bathroom on the flo third floor is accessible, but nobody can get to it in their wheelchair. Yeah. I feel like that's the whole country right now. Like people yeah. are like, what? everybody's like, everybody's asleep. I'm like, I think we're all asleep. I think we all need to like take it down a notch and just talk simply and 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 think of everybody's perspective while like having a voice for you, having a voice everybody we nobody's allowed to have a voice now. Uh, may I have two back? May I say one more, more, yeah, one more story? Yeah. Okay. So speaking on making theaters accessible, I, I think theater here in Poughkeepsie, I work with them a little bit on getting things accessible. And uh, when I was with the Teutonic Resources Independence Center, Independent Living Center, anyway, uh, we they wanted to me to they wanted to find I, first of all I was in my office and but the, the building code manager the city of building inspector goes into my house into my office okay well, 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 so, uh, you know Joe wants me oh okay okay so we go all the way up to the part of my theater we walk up to, well you don't know where I am but it's a little bit of a couple of good long city blocks so he goes he said. Goes into the. He said, "We want to, we want to make this closet the best place to put a to put a wheel to put an accessible bathroom, a really accessible bathroom, it was right down to this, and it was like four inches off, and the community had a trap fit. My community, well, not really, but I said, listen, for four inches." I was the first one to use the bathroom. Four inches, I'll, I'll take it. They're not being able to go at all. Mm. Right. <laughs> so, okay, not. yeah, okay. Okay. Right. So you, you accepted the four inches as opposed to starting being having a Yeah, problem. it was perfect. It could have been four inches bigger. I mean, it was just off a little bit. I said, yeah, how many times have we had to go behind something in, in a can, you know? Uh, right, so you're, go. Seeing, you're seeing the glass half full like I am. Like, okay, it's not perfect, but we're moving forward. That's what that's what my sitcom is about. It's all about what would it look like for us to move forward? And it's like we move forward one tiny inch every week. That's what the sitcom is. It's hilarious. It's like a joke yeah. on how hard it is to move forward, but better to move forward and to not get so angry and gang-like. And like, I feel like if I believe this and I'm going to do it with Sue TV, that if you give people the opportunity to be good, they will be good. And if they don't be good, that's when, that's why I always say I'm a bunny, but I can be a shark. Like I'm a bunny. I'm going to give you the opportunity to be good. If you're not good, we're going to push you back. That's the Sue TV. That's the sugar muffins because I feel like there's a lot of empaths that care about people. People with disabilities have big hearts. They, a lot of them. Some people are scam artists. There are people that are in, uh, that have disabilities that are scam artists and do everything. Yeah. It's the same as any uh, sector of, of humanity. We all have. But I, what I'm going to do with Sue TV is so now. So the ramp. The ramp is going to be symbolic of everything now because during the uh, pandemic, the toilet paper was symbolic. Remember, everybody took all the toilet paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now okay. the ramp is going to be symbolic for all of everything that we talk about on Sue TV. Like, we just want the ramp. Can and, and if you think about it from a standpoint with the relationships, like, it's very hard to, like, if you ask somebody for something, people have so much trauma and craziness that you could ask them for something and they could go off on a tangent. I mean, you've probably experienced that when you call up to try to get something done. They act crazy, 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 crazy. And eventually you just get back to what you had asked for in the beginning. So that's what Sue TV is going to be. We're going to get the hard numbers. We're going to try to keep everybody. That's why I started it, to keep everybody just balanced so that they could look at something that that makes sense to them, that has common sense. And so that's what the, the ramp will represent. Like, we just need the ramp. We're not asking for elevators. We're not asking for this. We just, we just need the ramp right now. Can we manage the ramp? Fine. Like I right. say, and, and you and build on that. I've done that many times. Yes. And also, people say, oh, I, I, I've got so many people in my store now. I'm going to do, I'm going to go with that counter. I think I better. That's a good idea. Hold on, you're going too fast. What did you say? You have too many people in the store? Oh, I'm saying, yeah, I'm getting so many people in my company and my store now. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to lower that counter so they can, you know, yeah. sign the, you yeah. know, boom, 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 yeah. boom. You know? so that thing about signing the credit card, I was with my brother at the social plaza and, uh, he was paying for something and he had to like reach up to put his uh yeah. his bag up there. And then all of a sudden the woman said, punch the middle of the counter and he and he took his hand and he went like that and that thing came out and he was able to sign it at his chest. Oh, and I, just, there you I, go. I never forgot what his face looked like when it was like a dignity thing that I was like, Oh, look how yeah. 
But that's yeah, how I well, feel about everybody. I feel like we've lost human dignity everywhere. And so that's what we're going to bring back with Sue TV. And that's why I wanted to have you on today for our Christmas special. Because look at Vince. How old are you? 74? 74. As of the 10th. You don't look a day over 73 and a half. Ah, uh, thank you. I, <laughs> I, even, I even have my beard trim for you. You look handsome. I love it. And I love your hat. So uh, this is to let everybody know. I mean, you're going to share this with your community and everything. And we'll build on it. So that's what I wanted to do. I want to be able to do this and then have you share it with your community and then have them build on it and have it become electrifying. Well, yeah, well, I have been, I, you know, I promote you, I promote Sue TV, I promote you on all the, uh, on everything too. So we'll definitely add this and, okay. and we're going to talk you up as a fantastic ally that you are. Um, and, and, ally thank you for, me. and thank you for the equal opportunity, Sue. I love human beings. I do. I love it. And I can, I can, I'm very good at seeing where people get all like, I, I don't know how to describe when they get all caught up in their like craziness. I can help them out of that. I, that's the one thing. I'm very good at that. I can help people take like take the simple step to get themselves out of whatever's the fear, whatever it is, the fear, yeah, the terror, the anxiety. Yeah. All right. So let's Thank say you. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas, Marcel. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Can't wait to see Sue TV. Thanks, Vince. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Sue. Okay.